let's start with the head. You can just use the default cube and add a subdivision surface modifier to it. Increase the subdivision count to whatever you like. In edit mode, you can start shaping out your head by adding loop cuts and moving your vertices. I started out by making a more complex shape, but I ended up simplifying it. This is what I ended up with. I applied the subdivision modifier so I could shave the top of the head off. The reason I did this is because I'll add a helmet to this character, and I don't really need those faces. It's not necessary to do this, but if your game is going to be on low spec devices, like mobile phones or old PCs, it's always nice to optimize a bit. For the helmet, I added another cube with a subdivision surface modifier. Once I had the shape ready, I applied the subdivision modifier to work on the details. All I really did was fill the hole on the bottom, add a few loop cuts, and scale them to add this ridge on the edge of the helmet. This is what the helmet ended up looking like. I won't be going over every part individually in this video, but basically all you need to do is create cubes with the subdivision surface modifier and play with the shape of your object by using the basic transformation tools like moving, rotating and scaling along with the loop cut tool and extrusion. I created a nose for the character like this. Then I moved on to making a beard and mustache for the character. I made the beard by creating a single hair piece and reusing it. While I'm modeling the rest of the body, I'll give you a few tips on how you can create a convincing and interesting character in this style. First things first, when each little part of your character is a separate object, there's bound to be some ugly or weird looking edges between the body parts. This is partially why you'll see me add a belt between the torso and the legs, and later on these bracelets on the ankles and the wrists of the character. They don't only hide ugly parts, they can also be used to spice up your character. Secondly, try to keep in mind the size of your character. As you know, in the Blender scene there's a grid. Each square represents one meter. A good practice when modeling for games is to keep the scale of your models consistent. On its own it doesn't really matter that much, but when imported to a game engine with lots of different models, it might cause problems when trying to scale the models to a consistent size. One more small tip. When working with objects with the subdivision surface modifier, you can use beveling to control the sharpness of the edges. The thinner the bevel at an edge, the sharper the edge. Also, when beveling, you can use the scroll wheel to add more subdivisions to your bevel. Now that the model seems to be done, we'll move on to UV unwrapping. The way we'll texture this character allows us to not be too specific with the seams. We don't necessarily even have to mark any seams, as each object will have their own flat color. I'm marking the seams just in case I want to add some gradients on the objects. Remember that the edges you mark as seams will be the ones that cut your model into pieces when unwrapping to a 2D plane. After marking the seams in every object, you can select them by pressing A, go to UV editing, select all the edges by pressing A and unwrap. This is your UV map. It's basically all the faces of the model projected onto a 2D plane. What we'll do is create a simple texture with different colors in it and move all the separate UV islands on top of the different colors. Move on to an image editor. It doesn't really matter which one. Create a new square shaped image. The resolution doesn't really matter, but I went for 2048 by 2048. Make some gradients with the colors you'd like to use for your character. Usually most image editors have a gradient tool you can use for this. Export the image and go back to Blender. In Blender, create a new material and add it to each one of the objects your character consists of. Once you've done that, go to the shading tab. Add an image texture to your material. Click open and find the texture you just created. Connect it to the base color of your material. Now your character looks like something at least, I guess? Don't worry, we're just getting started. Go back to the UV editing tab, select all the objects using A, go to edit mode, select all the edges, and now you can move all the UVs out of the texture. Deselect all the edges, hover your mouse over whichever part you want to modify. Press L to select all the faces of that specific object, and now you can scale and move your UVs to whichever color you want them to be. As you can see, this way we can easily add simple but interesting colors to our character. Now you just have to repeat that for every single object. Subscribe. Subscribe to my channel. As you can see, we've made a fully colored character and all that's left to do is rigging. 
just a side note, you can play with the properties of the material to get a different looking surface for the character. Alright now, rigging. Well, I'm kind of a lazy person, but luckily I already went over rigging on my PS1 character video. I used the same techniques from that video for the rigging of my character in this video, so please go check that out. Once that's done, you can basically go over and animate your character however you want. And that's basically it. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, leave a like. And if you really enjoy my content, you can buy me a coffee from the first link in the description. Bye.